So what do these legal developments mean for the future of their party, the GOP? Joining us now, two MSNBC political analysts, two former uh, Republican big league players, Michael Steele, he's a former RNC chairman, as well as former Florida Republican Congressman David Jolly. Thanks, guys, so much for being here. Congressman Jolly, let's just first start with the George Santos news. Thirteen federal counts, fraud, money laundering, theft of public funds, false statements. What kind of pressure does this put on Speaker McCarthy to confront this behavior? Uh, certainly a lot of pressure. Look, George Santos is somebody that has been an unknown fraud, if you will, from the time he arrived in Washington. The question is, what can the House actually do? The House does have the authority to expel a member. Uh, there is not strong precedent for expelling based just on indictment. Often what you see is a member will be removed from committees, removed from the Republican conference, if they do not otherwise choose to resign, which George Santos Good. Uh, Fortenberry from Nebraska last year and then about three or four other members in the previous few years have all been faced indictment. They stayed in the House. They resigned once they were convicted. And in a case where a member does not resign upon conviction, they would be expelled. So somewhere in that will be the journey for Santos. The political reality, Anna, is this, though. Kevin McCarthy needs George Santos' vote, and he will still be allowed to vote on the House floor. McCarthy knows that, so I don't suspect uh, McCarthy will do anything right away against George Santos. Michael, take a look at this. Santos and Trump gobbling up all the headlines this morning, and for all the wrong reasons, you can see Trump found liable for sexual abuse. That's the New York Post. The Daily News jury finds Donald Trump sexually abused. E. Jean Carroll awards her $5 million. What do you think these two players' futures look like in the Republican Party as you look into 2024 and the crystal ball? Strong. <laughs> look, this is, this is what the bed the party's made. You know, I, what I find that the irony for me is that everyone is sort of, you know, to David's point, you know, sort of praying and hoping that, you know, Santos just kind of disappears and they're trying to distance themselves. I'm like, wait a minute, you got this guy who's now been indicted on this end, you don't, you want to distance yourself from, but then you got this other guy who's been indicted and now found guilty of basically sexual assault and you're like embracing him. So the party is even at conflict with itself with respect to the, the two criminal elements that are right in front of them. So I just don't get if they it. can't, they I can't do I, anything I about it. that. I don't get I don't get it either. <laughs> it makes no sense to me. It is I mean, not logical. Isn't wrong a wrong a wrong? And yet this is what we hear from some inside the Republican Party as they were asked for their reaction to the E. Jean Carroll decision. Listen to this. I think the New York legal system's off the rails when it comes to Donald Trump. I don't think it's gonna make a difference to Trump supporters or Trump opponents. The fact is, I, I do not think he can win the presidency. I hope the uh, the jury of the American people uh, reach the same conclusion about Donald Trump. He just is not suited to be president of the United States. In my four and a half years serving alongside the president, I, I never heard or witnessed behavior uh, of that nature. <laughs> Congress, Congressman, what does that mashup tell you? A bunch of hot garbage from Republicans today. Yes. Let's just call it what it is. Anna, it is not hard to take the side of a victim in a case where you know Donald Trump was just found liable for sexual assault. And that includes the likes of those being silent, Ron DeSantis and others. It is not hard to say, I'm glad E. Jean Carroll had her day in court, and I think Donald Trump should be held accountable. You can still hug his politics closely if you want to out of partisan loyalty. I do think what you saw from Cornyn, though, is an interesting angle, which is he does not think that Donald Trump can be president of the United States. That is not a qualitative moral argument against the president that they should be making. It is a political one that says in a general election, someone now who has faced liability, culpability for sexual assault is a bad general election candidate. Michael, do you think any of this news will rattle Donald Trump's base at all? He's about to go forward with this town hall tonight. No, it's not going to rattle. In fact, it reinforces it. Uh, they lean into it. I mean, they see him as the victim here. They do not believe that he sexually assaulted E. Jean Carroll, just as they don't believe he had anything to do with January 6th, that the folks who rallied to support Donald Trump on that day are patriots. So there is no there is no separation. There's no daylight 
um, despite what Cornyn says and, and what Mitt Romney said, there's no daylight between the base and Donald Trump. And the, the judgment that the American people are going to make is going to be after Donald Trump is the nominee of the party uh, for the general election in November of next year. So that's the point. This all leads to the initial most important point. It's not what happens in November 24. It's the fact that Donald Trump, with all of this happening around him right now, with more to come, by the way, Anna, as you know, right? There are other there trials are several, to be had. Yeah, several cases that's still right, out there. Though. Exactly. He will be the nominee of the party. And so that's that speaks volumes about any separation between Trump, no matter how much Cornyn beats his breast about Donald Trump not being fit for the presidency, you're going to vote for him. You're going to make well, him your nominee. So it doesn't matter. Trump's team seems to think that they will benefit in the fundraising after this verdict oh. in the E. Jean Carroll case. So that's what Politico is reporting, at least this morning. Michael Steele and David Jolly, former congressman from Florida. Thank you both.